You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., join Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Rev. Ray and friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Rev. Ray for Bread of Life for a Word in Season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Rev. Curtis, Rev. Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, I want to introduce our newest broadcast that joined us in 2018, The Marriage Take Over the Body of One, hosted by Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. They will be addressing a wide range of topics that will serve to encourage you and to strengthen your marriage. So remember, that's every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, The Marriage Take Over over the body of one. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed to PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www. 
dot when Christians speak dot com. God bless you. Praise the Lord and welcome to another hour of Declaring the Finished Work. This is your host, Pat Randall. Here we are on this wonderful Thursday afternoon. Amen. Taking a moment in our day to focus our eyes on our Lord and to hear what he is speaking to us in this moment. Well, I've been replaying uh, part of the series from God in a Box, uh, which I did in 2017. And I thought it would be um, a great reminder to go back and to also see how it connects to the series I just completed, uh, Mind Renewal. And if you haven't heard Mind Renewal, I suggest that you go back and and listen to um, those episodes. Amen. So today we're in part nine of Gone in a Box. And the main focus of this message is on the culture of love. So we'll be looking at the culture of love in the world and the culture of love in the kingdom of God. And we will see, we will clearly see that they are on opposing sides. Amen. So let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for life. I thank you for your breath that flows through me. I thank you for your son, Christ Jesus, my Lord and Savior and soon coming King. I thank you that you have ordained this moment in time to breathe a word into our lives that will feed us and nourish us and strengthen us to continue in our journey to remind us that we are more than conquerors that it is well with our souls i thank you lord god for this broadcast today i thank you that the words will go forth to accomplish the very purposes for which you have sent them i thank you lord for greater levels of freedom in 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 the name of christ jesus that we will move into a place that we are freely flowing in the spirit that we are so connected with you that we can hear and see what you are doing i thank you lord god for a spirit of obedience Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, for a spirit of love and power. I thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful, that you will never leave us and never forsake us. I thank you. You have prospered us. You have prospered us. You have given us abundant life. You have given us the spirit of peace. You are our peace. You are our everything. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you that you continually bless us and favor us. And we thank you for this. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. So be blessed by part nine of God in a Box. I think I mentioned at the end of last week's broadcast that we were going to move into the culture of love. I'm going to speak a little bit about the culture of love in the world. But most of my time is going to be spent on the culture of the kingdom. Glory to God. So when we were under the world's culture of love. This is what we believed. We believed that we could only love those who loved us. That our love was conditional. 
We believe that love received from a person is what fulfills us. We believe that the lack of love from certain people defined us. We always love expecting something in return. We felt jilted if our love wasn't returned. We loved out of our brokenness in this world because that's what we had. We believe that someone loving us could heal us of this brokenness. We confused lust with love. We loved people the way we wanted to be loved instead of how they needed to be loved. We believe that love was a response to being loved. We believed that we could fall out of love. And that's just to, to name a few of the untruths that we are exposed to coming into this world's culture of, of, of love. We grow up and eventually we learn. We don't start out that way, but through exposure to other people, the culture of this world, we learn to love in a broken way. When we were born, we instinctively loved unconditionally. As children, if you watch children, they have this unconditional love. Even, even a child with an abusive parent will still love that parent. Because the love is unconditional. But as you stay in the environment of brokenness, it begins to change you. And you begin to unlearn loving unconditional. And then your love becomes Conditional. That's what you have learned. A friend of mine, um, we were on a, a journey of discussion about love and, and what love, really looking at love. Um, I had shared with her that early on in my um, conversion, God spoke to me that I should major on love. That that is, that's the center. That's the center focus, love. And I had to grow into what the Lord was actually speaking to me about majoring in love. Because I, because I was had learned to love in a broken way, I assumed that it had something to do with me performing love. Me being able to love God, me being able to love people. And when you start off with that approach that this is what you must do, amen, uh, because God commands us to love one another and to love our enemies, all those things. But when we start off with the perspective that we must perform this thing, we discover failure. Because we're loving out of our brokenness. And we can only love out of what is inside of us amen so we are going to uh, look at the kingdom of God 
and what love looks like. In the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I have a lot of scriptures that I am going to be going through today. I'm speaking so slowly because the the spirit of the Lord is so prevalent right now. Um, glory to God. Right here where I am uh, in his presence. But as I started to, to gather around all these scriptures about love around me, um, something amazing, amazing happened. Just amazing. I was just so overtaken. Um, You know, we talk about God loving us, but we don't always understand. And I mean understand in our hearts, not in our minds, but in our hearts that we know in our hearts just how much. But as we break through into uh, freedom, into liberty, we discover new depths and new heights of God's love for us. And so that's what happened to me. Amazingly as I was going through these scriptures. I just felt this download of love just overtaking me. And maybe that is why I'm experiencing what I'm experiencing right now. As I'm trying to get through this message. Praise God. Praise God. So I'm going to first start off with uh, some scriptures that tell us how God loves us. How? How? Romans 5.10 says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. This is how God loves. He loved us, his enemies. And he reconciled us back to himself by the death of his son. And now that he has done this, he's saying much more. Now that he has reconciled us to himself. Shall we be saved by his life? Saved by his life. And this saving is an ongoing saving. It's not just a one-time saving. It's It's a continual experience of this saving life that we have through Christ Jesus. Hebrews 12, starting in verse 2, I'm going to read just two to three looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God consider him who endured from sinners from us such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted hallelujah hallelujah he endured the cross endured the cross so that we who were once hostile to him would not grow weary or faint-hearted. This is what his love has provided for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To not grow weary or faint-hearted. Oh, how God loves us. 
Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 through 23. I'm going to do a lot of scripture reading and I'm going to try not to teach too much in between. Uh, uh, I may not be able to resist saying something about these scriptures because these scriptures really sum everything up for us. Amen. And and I encourage you to take time and go through these scriptures and just let them wash over you and take over you. Amen. Lamentations chapter 3 verse uh, starting in um, verse 22. I'm going to read 22 and 23. Because of the Lord's great love. We are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness. We're not consumed because of his great love. And his compassion, his compassion toward us never fails. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First John 4, 9 says this. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world. That we might live through him. Jesus. Was the demonstration. Of how much. God loves us. How much our father loves us. That he would send. The son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So he's speaking to us in these last days through his son. What is he speaking? He's speaking love. It's a love language. Hallelujah. This is the culture of the kingdom. God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The next set of scriptures I'm going to read to show us God's love towards us and the nature of this this love that he has towards us. 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He lavished his love on us and called us his children. Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you, I, have been saved. Hallelujah. By grace. By grace. By grace. Not by works. But by his loving kindness, by his mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 42 8 says, By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. 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 Psalm 94, 18 says, When I said, my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. 
Psalm 86, 5. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. Hallelujah. This familiar chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, which is known as that love chapter, it really describes the kind of love, the agape love, the love of God. God's love is patient and kind. It does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. The one thing that remains is love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. What is this perfect? This perfect love. When this perfect love comes, the partial, the partial, the imperfect will pass away. The more we are filled With the love of God. The more we know, the more we see. Love brings clarity. It brings a vision that has no limit to it. That's what God's love does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 49, 15 through 16. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? I will never forget. I have engraved you in the palm of his hand. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. I has not seen or ear heard all that the Lord has prepared for those who love him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is a love that just gives and gives and gives and gives. I has not seen or ear heard all that the Lord has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. A lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning because he loves us. This love, this love, this love gives us the ability to, in, to endure that weeping that stays for the night. But waking up, we rejoice because we know that we are loved. We rejoice because we are loved and we are loved forever. Forever, and that overtakes sorrow, it overtakes loss. This love, only this agape love, this love from God, can do that, can heal us. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Thank you, God. 
Psalm 30, verse 5. Oh, no, I did that one. Psalm 103, verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. And I love this one from Songs of Songs. Hallelujah. Or Songs of Solomon. Chapter 8, verse 6, it says, it's talking about love. Place me, place me, love, like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm. For love is as strong as death. It's jealous, jealousy unyielding as the grave. It burns like blazing fire, like a mighty flame. This love, God's love is like a mighty flame and it burns the dross out of our lives. Hallelujah. Con- just continuously purifying us so that we can receive more of this love. This all-consuming love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3, 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. And we know that how God disciplines us is not through tragedy. Do you discipline your children by breaking their arm? By causing great sorrow? This father is even greater than a natural father. And his love is perfect. And when he chastens us, when he disciplines us, he disciplines us as a loving father. And we're able to bear under his rebuke because he loves us. And we know that he loves us. And that when he is angry, he is angry at the sin. The sin that the enemy introduced into this world, into our lives. He's angry at that. Because he knows it's robbing us. It's harming us. And his anger is kindled against sin. Against anything that would harm his children. That's how great his love is for us. I think about the, the, the story that Jesus shared about the son. Who asked for his inheritance. Before his father even died. And he took it and he left home. And he squandered it on just wild and reckless living and when it was all spent all those who were hanging around him when he had were gone he was becoming hungry the lack was so great in his life that he almost almost yielded himself to eating with the pigs eating what the pigs were eating but he had an awakening and he said let me go home to my father because even if he doesn't accept me as a son i could be a i'll be a hired servant because even the servants in my father's household are living much greater living better and he goes home not realizing that his father has been looking waiting 
And when his father sees him from afar, he runs towards him. He doesn't even wait for him to come to him. He runs the minute he sees him coming toward him. He immediately responds. He immediately responds. And he runs to this son. This prodigal son. Who'd gone astray. And left the good place that his father had provided for him. But his father didn't even give him the opportunity to even speak those things of regret to ask for forgiveness the father already knew his heart he knew that his son had been broken by the sin of the world and he was returning to him broken and his father received him and put a robe this glorious robe on his back and a ring on his finger identifying who he is. And sandals on his feet. Gave a feast celebrating the return of the son. That's the culture of the love of God in his kingdom. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm going to stop right here. I thought I was going to be able. I have so many, many more scriptures. Uh, I wanted to. Um, let me just. I'm going to just read um, just a few more before I stop. And these scriptures speak of our pos- the position that we have in the love of God. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Then verse 38 goes on to say, For I am convinced... That neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He has anchored us in his love. Hallelujah. 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 Know this in your heart. You've been anchored in his love. And nothing can separate you from him. From his love. Hallelujah. 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. We no longer have to fear. His love is perfect. His love is perfect towards us. And it drives out every fear. Every fear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have to fear punishment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It drives out fear because a lot of the things that we do that are against the commandments of God is because of, we fear. We fear that we're going to lack something, we're going to miss something, we're not going to have something. And when we act out of that fear, that fear of loss, it causes us 
because there's an anxiety, there's a worry, causes us to do things that are outside of the love of God. Anything outside of the love of God is sin. Anything outside of the love of God is sin. 1 John 4, 18 says, There is no fear in love. Oh, I just read that. But it's worth reading again. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. Psalm 143, 8 says, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. Hallelujah. Let the morning, when I wake up, let the day bring me word of your unfailing love, Jesus. That's our day. We wake up in the unfailing love of God. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit. Love is a fruit of the Spirit. Not a work, but a fruit. Abiding in Him. It causes us to bear the fruit of love and joy and peace. Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Just by keeping our minds stayed on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continually reminding ourselves that we are a much loved child. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Living in the knowledge of his faithfulness and his perfect love towards us. Hallelujah. It produces fruit. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And again, such things as this fruit that comes out of the Spirit. There's no law. There is no law against it. There is no law. I'm going to stop right here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I always think I'm going to get further than I'm going to get. But you know what? The Holy Spirit is flowing the way he wants to flow. Amen. So we'll pick back up on the culture of love in the in God's kingdom. And I'm going to move into the scriptures that show us that this love that God is commanding, he is the one that creates the ability in us to love. He causes us to love him and to love others. The very thing that he is asking of us, he gives to us so that we have something to give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I just thank you. I thank you for the the words that you have written and the words that you speak to us even now about how much you love us and the kind of God that you are. Your nature. Your nature is to love. Your way is to love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your love drives out all our fears. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Your loveliness Changing my unworthiness Oh, 
oh Lord, I receive your love. Oh Lord, your tenderness, changing my bitterness. Oh, Lord, I receive your love. Oh, Lord, I receive your love. Oh, I receive your love, oh, 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 Lord, I receive your love, I receive, I receive, I receive, oh, Lord. I receive your love. Hmm. Hallelujah. Your loveliness changing my unworthiness. Hallelujah. 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 Your tenderness just cleansing me of all bitterness. Hallelujah. It's your love. I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came into the world not to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. So, if you're here listening now, amen to all these scriptures that I just finished reading about our Father, our Father who, who created us, who loved us into existence. And you have not said yes to receiving the gift of his son as your Lord and Savior. Just say, yes, Lord. Today I receive. I receive your forgiveness. Hallelujah. Your forgiveness of sin. Recognizing that there's nothing that I can do to change your my life but you, your love. Hallelujah. Your love transforms me. And I receive. I receive your son. Christ Jesus. As my Lord and as my Savior. Call upon him. Call upon him and you shall be saved. Amen. Thank you God. Thank you Lord. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today on this broadcast. Amen, 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 and amen. Tomorrow night we've got uh, Reverend Ray on Friday Night Joy with his friends. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then Sunday we've got Bread of Life again with Reverend Ray as host. Amen. And he is just delivering such a good word. He did a message last week. I think it was his Friday night message, Friday night joy. He shared a word about take no thought. It was either that or the bread of life. But, you know, if you download our app, a smartphone app onto you, any of your devices, amen, you'll be able to just catch up because all of these broadcasts become podcasts and you are able to listen to them at any time. Go back, listen to them as many times as you need to. There are almost a thousand podcasts out there 
on When Christians Speak Talk Radio app. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Just continue as you move through this day to just let the love of God just continue to minister to you. Hallelujah. Just continue to receive the weight of this love. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, be glorified. Lord, be glorified in our day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Listen to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio, iHeart Radio, Speaker.com, all of our broadcasts are available as podcasts through SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, Blueberry.com, Zoom.com, Stitcher.com, Lisbon.com, and BlogTalkRadio.com. To listen to our broadcast by phone, dial 646-478-0660. Again, that number is 646-478-0660. Go visit and like our Facebook page, When Christians Speak Talk Radio. Also be sure to check out Christians Against Suicide and Depression. It's a page dedicated to sharing God's love, encouragement, and hope. There are prayer warriors standing by to receive prayer requests, doing intercession for those under attack by the lie and deception of the devil. We know that the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy, but praise God, Jesus came to set the captives free. Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord. When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. So all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com and click on our donation page. Okay.